this is easy break phone and um i want to explain how i'm breaking down my charts for this coming week i start from the usd card weekly time frame and normally what i do is to identify the trend and this market is clearly trending on the daily time frame you'll see very clearly how the trend will be gone but here on the weekly time frame you can't really see see it here and then you get a wider view and see the trend started earlier and this was the first bounce so one bounce another bounce and now price has gotten to this point let's see how normally when market uh, the market is trending it starts has a, a an initial wave a progressive wave and a conclusive wave so uh, I we, we can't really we, uh, we just want to see how this market is going know whether it's going to go away so I assume this was the trigger wave this was the progressive wave and this is the conclusive wave and probably a start of a new wave or a new a rejection to this point and a continuation of the same trend anything can happen that's why we were thinking probabilities so we're still going to be thinking probabilities around this my alpha large quarter anything can happen first can I'm looking to buy from this area I know price has already uh, sort of rejected from here but I'm just telling you what I was thinking so as I was coming here I'm looking to buy off this area back up or at the break of that zone that's how I normally buy that's why I divided my chart into quarters so we um, look at the fib and see how it has been operating and then from here you can see market got up from 0 to 100 came back down to the 60 1.8 fib although i haven't set up my fib here properly but this is supposed to be 61.8 fib this is a new browser sorry and came back up to the 127 percent fib okay my chart keeps doing this i don't know why okay 127 fib and and it has come back down now you see it works like magic these fibs this 127 level is a target level and many traders know that and many traders are monitoring it so and many traders are monitoring this trend so as price has gotten here now are rejected and also traders are still monitoring still monitoring looking at different things looking at different conditions and trying to determine whether it's safe to buy at certain levels or safe to sell and so this is another area decision area where traders have to decide is it safe to buy the usd over the canadian dollar or should i sell the usd and buy the canadian dollar price has gone got up from zero to hundred let's come back down this is the 50 50 um 0 by 5 fib 50 percent fib and then uh, i noticed something on the usd card it tends to follow it tends to um, go along with the with the um, 61 feet a little more than the the uh, 32 feet so if I sell this pair I'll be very careful to take maybe a midpoint trade because I'll be careful I will sell for only from here I won't sell from here to be it will be re uh, reckless for a trader like me to sell from here but if I want to buy I can buy from here very comfortably but if I spot a rejection here on the daily time frame on the H4 I know that and um, that will give me a signal so this will be in the next target should be somewhere around the gamma large quarter which is two which is um yes two large quarters away that means i can make a whole lot of pips on if i get my analysis right so let's go to the daily time frame quickly and um on the daily time frame okay slow internet sorry about that okay on the daily time frame we have here we can see the market swings clearer i see the market swings clearer okay i forgot to show you something on the weekly time frame earlier on when i was breaking down this when i was um arranging this pair and then drawing my zooms i said something i said okay if this is the original swing second and the third this could well very well be the end of this trend so we have to put that in mind knowing that markets swing three times most times three times hardly four hardly five but still very possible based on technical and many other factors like this market is swing up swing up so just keep our minds open keep our minds open and we're looking out for signals so now price has gotten to the area towards the area of contention we'll see what it did at this our alpha large quarter what signals did you provide did it look like it was going to buy or sell so that's what we're going to see now and as price and uh, the market got to this zone yeah, see this is an inside bar this is a clear inside bar look at it very delicious and this looks like an inside bar fake out i see price came down normally when price goes the other way of the mother bar it acts as if it's if it, it, it shows that it's going that way it, sh it might have triggered some entries let me just put it like i might trigger some entries and now this is showing that it's a fake out because price didn't go this way anymore it it bounced off very clearly of this our major area of contention 
after the inside bar this is a buy signal this is a very good buy signal in according to my standard this is a buy signal if you get an h4 cross a counter trend line break and one or two other confluences can we can say okay you can sell you can buy this pair very comfortably i want to bring in a trend line here trend line is so 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 far away i'm not sure i can wait to okay i can buy to the trend line i can't wait to the trend line this is you know, counter trend line the trend line because i'm not using it to call the function i'm not using it to play i'm not using it to ask for an entry and that's why i'm calling a counter trend line so this is a very good inside graphic house scenario where price has acted as if we wanted to break the other way but it's going this way so this trend line is useless for now i'm just take it away so this is the signal and uh, uh, is a good signal a good buy signal on the daily so normally when you get a buy signal on the daily you have to look for an entry on the h4 on the h1 let me just go down to the h4 and see what's happening over there mm -hmm. okay so here you can see the rejection clearer here although there's no inside okay there's an inside bar here but i take note of inside bars on the daily most of my candlestick signals on the daily take note of them then this is an h4 you look for the moving average cross h4 moving average cross or I look for the moving average cross on the H4 most times because that's that's a very valid level based on my standards. And also, I'll draw I'll draw the counter trend line on the H4. The, the daily is too. You can't draw a counter trend line on the daily time frame. It's just not allowed. Uh, I'll, I'll, during my course, I'll write down the rules, different different rules that we must follow if we want to stay in this market. If not, you be one of those people who say, Ah, forex. I tried it one year and it doesn't really work. Because you didn't follow the rules or make it to make it work that's why it doesn't really work so now let me just draw this trend line this was where the, on the h4 this was where the market started it, it's decent here yeah? came into this quarter came back up came down down and this way it has rejected just as it's it's it reached the second quarter it has rejected and it's showing good signs of a buy and this is i think this is going to be a buy but I'll, the best time is to look for it is best to look for the perfect entry here the card is very fond of fake out spikes and many look at look at this look at the most finished speaking look at the spike here the card is fond of so many spikes i can put one in trouble so we have to be very very careful with the way we trade the usd card but i think this entry here here will this will be a very good place to enter the market in case the market goes back down if not so just wait to the midpoint but there's no entry yet we have to wait for the news release an important news release and we know that usd's news release coming on coming up on wednesday wednesday i think yeah okay have some and on friday we'll have the almighty and the almighty uh um, nfp where many traders will be looking out for so here's the card my bias is a buy my bias is a buy not sure nobody sure do not put the signal yet not test any trades but that's my analysis my speculation okay, let's go to the usd euro usd and then and the euro usd uh, weekly time frame what we look at on the weekly time frame is to try and see the overall trend see what is going on on the euro usd and the euro usd normally when you want to spot a fault in a market trend you see a hundred you see um a Fibonacci retracement that exceeds 100 percent you know there's a fault on that trade so this this pair went from zero to 100 obviously this zero obviously this 100 and now instead of rebounding and the 50 feet we smashed the 50 feet so desperately came back and it tested it smashed it right down again and now it's into an area of um conf let me say con consolidation this is a weekly time period to notice some serious consolidation and then now we're going to look deeper to see what's happening in that area of consolidation is price going to make create a second shoulder here that just try and go up to this quarter it's very very possible or is it ready for a descent because uh, price is clearly because of the faults price clearly isn't in an uptrend here anymore trend has changed and then it could go straight down or it could go up a little first and come back or it could go down and come back up market can do anything but we need to we need to be there to follow what it's doing we don't need to try and predict for it let us follow whatever it's doing if we're going up going down we're going to go in the same direction that's how we're going to be trading so yeah, on the weekly, we're only looking for candlestick signals on the weekly. Remember, we're really only looking for for the um, the last candlestick, and this was the previous the previous candlestick, the previous candlestick. You can see, uh, let, okay, price 
spikes so many spikes around here no clues around here only no clues okay only one clues below this area since then price has been just right um, I mean, this is very choppy this is no no consolidation this is a choppy market and that's produced okay on the daily time frame i'll show it more clearly this is the last candlestick which is very decent candlestick it's not a signal candlestick it's not a nice candlestick. So make it make it any decision whatsoever so i've not been paying it i paid no mind okay on the on the daily okay you can see a a triangle a symmetrical triangle uh symmetrical triangle normally when the market comes you know how to trade the symmetrical triangle and when the market comes okay let me move this thing when the market comes into the range the choppy range it normally goes in the same direction and when the market was coming in the first place which is in this case south uh, bearish or bearish so um, we we need a signal we need a news release we need something we need something to make us see okay this price actually going down for now i can't see anything honestly look at this here you can't just take signals and not really showing me much although i got an engulfing here off this zone which is a good one a very good engulfing candlestick i like it very decent size two prices started in place and normally i buy engulfing candlesticks only after the second swing when i get an engulfing candlestick like this i don't place a buy around here no that's a we make a very big loss if you don't know how to trade so that's the difference in psychology and that's what where psychology comes in now you understand that market has gone this swing and you know that on the daily on the one hour time frame I like to mention the one hour and the daily time frame. Let me go that one hour time frame. I said the market has got a swing up. So let me go down to H4 first. If I go down to the one hour and the H4 time frame, normally you can see so choppy, so choppy. And you can't really place a trade like this. But you can see you spotted an inside bar here, which is a signal at this area. The signal boy is an H4 signal is not too too strong, and there's no news release anytime around now. Except later on in the day, the sessions have not even started. We just we just we just set these are the fundamental we just set set up for fundamental for a fundamental uh, trigger uh, basically because or wait till tomorrow because today we have to look at the news releases I wrote about the news releases I don't talk about them too much here but we have to wait for a fundamental trigger in an, a news release that will break the candlesticks in one direction it might go up we don't know but I'm expecting a downside movement here. Let's go to the USDJPY. This is a very, this is based in a very serious area. Okay, I start from the, let me start from the daily facts. I start from the weekly. Okay, and the USDJPY. Let's see what market is doing here. The markets have been on somewhat a an uptrend over, over the past almost all this year, the whole year. In an uptrend, and you know, Japanese government they always like to keep their currency the value of their currency low, lower than the USD, lower than everything. That's why theirs is one oh something 110, while others are almost the same. That's why the yen pairs like that. And they, they for their liking, this is too high currently. I see it got to the 200 moving average on the weekly, which is quite high, and then um, rejected just of that zone clearly, very clear rejection showing that market might be headed for a low. Which a low when I say low, I mean I'm taking this as a weekly low. That's a weekly low. This is a weekly low. This is a weekly high because of the rejection of this 200 moving average. And I know this is a weekly high. So I'm expecting market to drop down to get even to probably to this midpoint here. That's in between the alpha and the beta lateral. That 108 point, 108 point eight or so, 108 price points. Market might reach 108.7. Yes, 108.7. Market might reach that region. So next, that's where I'm. That's what my weekly buyers is saying. I'm going to my daily charts. On the dailies, um, <coughs> you can see the rejection here very clearly, but it will be unsafe, and probably, yeah, it will be unsafe to, to be unsafe to um, <coughs> just analyze from the weekly because the weekly we don't really get an overall bias. But let me go back to the weekly just to see one more thing okay and the weekly time frame yeah you know that the, the chinese i said the the currency the usd has gone up against the okay so i was wrong i was so wrong the usd has gone up against the japanese yen throughout this year the usd has been going up against the japanese yen sorry let me mistaken a little bit sleepy eyed so um Jap the the um 
Japanese are trying to reduce the value of their currency because of this particular slide. I see how the market market is not supposed to be around here. The market is supposed to be USD is supposed to be much higher than the card. And I see the, around this demand area price went back up. And we're expecting we don't know what to expect honestly. Let me not say what I don't know on anything on this pair. But uh, let's just we have to go down to the lower time frame to see what's happening. I have to go down to the lower time frame to see what's happening. On the on this time frame, you can see based on fundamentals mainly. This this chart is being ruled by fundamentals. I was trying to bring up a because trying to bring up a technical scenario, but this chart is mainly ruled by fundamentals on the biggest on the bigger stage. So uh, I see around here. Now we've come back to the daily time frame. You can see that uh, price. You can see where price started its ascent. Yeah, around March 2018, started its first swing, and then um, this was this is a bottom, this is a major bottom. I can start this first swing, go up here, bounce back down. Let me check the fib level, let me see what fib levels is respecting. Okay, came back up here, bounce just off the 50 fib level. Okay, I see that was a very important job, and now went back up to the 100 and see this level works like magic you want just to touch it just to kiss the level a little and yeah, i see because so many traders are watching this level so many traders know what's happening so now we also because of the fact that we're a big form for us and we know how to trade the market we're also watching these levels and now market did almost the same thing here came back up here and now it's at the 50 level and at this 50 fib level remember i said on the weekly i was just making on the weekly i wasn't really seeing things clearly I was just making some vague um, last uh, points, but now you can see on the daily time frame that it's clearer that this market might want to repeat the same thing that it did before. And why would you want to do that? Traders have seen this level. These are level just like me. So many people are watching this same chart and they're doing this same thing. And the BOJ, the Japanese bank now, have Bank of Japan era. When I say Japanese bank, Bank of Japan have increase the interest rate to devalue their currency and then um, and, uh, increase the, um, the value of their ex export or increase exporting and reduce importing as a main point and you can see that it formed an inside bar uh, will i call this an inside bar or a tweezer uh, i don't i don't use tweezer tops and bottoms to trade anymore i don't use call the use this as the bullish inside bar this is an inside bar here from at this particular critical point where there's a 50 feet Okay, I didn't draw my trend line. There's a trend line here. Uh, this is a different chart. I didn't draw my trend line here. I'll put put the trend line there just to show you. Okay. So now just here, I see on this trend line, market has just bounced around there, and that is a confluence area, 50 feet trend line, and now this is the midpoint area too. This is where we have our midpoints. And this has an area. This is a place where you can a point where I can take a trade. I can only take trades from a large quarter or a midpoint mainly. But I don't really, I don't like to take trades from any other place. Although sometimes I can take trade from this my hesitation zone where maybe I was expecting market to go in one direction but it delayed before going in that direction and eventually I took the trade. So that's what I'm thinking. I'm taking, taking a trade from here up because of this inside bar which has been formed at this confluence area. Let me go down to the four hour time frame and see what's happening. And in the four hour time frame, you can see this is where the 200 MA is. Around the 200 MA, it's always a sensitive area. Now you added that as a confluence, as a, as a point of confluence. See, there's a four or seven on the four hour time frame. Okay, made a low here, made let me say somewhat a high after a rapid sell because this is a, I would, I would say this is a supply area. And it's possible that even on Friday, you can get a major sell from the same supply area. But let me not go over. Okay. So market now created a fault here, and after this fault, it went up a little, and now it's ready for its upside move. Okay, I'm done with USD USD card. Now let me go AUD USD AU. Okay, AU start from the weekly. AU is a very funny pair. I see how this market has this market was trending and ranging and trend. I don't know what is the channel channeling. Let me go like Channeling up down up down up down for so long and finally it has broken that trend i don't want i don't like to draw such extremely long trend lines like on the weekly 
but I, uh, I see it has broken the trend. The trend has been broken. It's looking for a new life cycle, either a consolidation life cycle, or uh, this market doesn't like to consolidate very often, honestly. But it's looking for some new direction. And uh, I won't really get down the weekly because the weekly is so vague. But this is the serious area, decision area where, it's, where people are asking is the market going back up? This is the decision area. Is the market going back up to retest these zones and to establish the fact that it has created a new trend? Is it going to do that to maybe test this zone? We don't know. If you want to find out on the daily. Okay. So keep in mind that um, a lot of um, data is coming out. We have to monitor China. A lot, a lot of Chinese data is coming out. And a lot of US data is coming out this week. We have to monitor them and enter at the release of this news. At, at this news releases most times. So that's where a lot of things happen. This market has been ranging. Just small. It's, 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 it's choppy. It's choppy. It's not really ranging. But I have to check on the smaller time frame. I will see much of ranging. Uh, but this is just looking a little bit choppy. And, uh, can't really decide from this kind of charts because one of these is a serious area we get an inside bar i think we got an inside bar here let me see this looks like this looks like and this is an inside bar this is clearly an inside bar look at this this bar is completely engulfed in the previous candlestick it's rare to see a candlestick that is completely engulfed in the previous candlestick and anytime that happens there's either a fake out or a real breakout so we have to go lower now to see whether this is a fake out or a breakout but let's just see okay on the 30th of 30th okay that's where you had the inside bar have to go low and not see if this is a real signal and let us on daily we we'll, we'll test and see our target points and too many of our other things we need to consider so if this market really is going up if this market really wants to go up the next possible target will be the midpoint in between the alpha and the beta large quarter because our moving average is hovering around there. That, that looks like a realistic midpoint. So this market is not this market is not going in under the normal laws of the trend and many things. But um, we will not bring a lot of confidence to determine an accurate entry and exit. Don't just enter anywhere and exit anywhere because many things can happen. So the market came up, and in a way, yes, market has rejected, has tested the 50 fib. Market has tested it actually, and it's not like. Mm, there was no action around here, but it was in such so it, it was so slow to get there. So after so much consolidation, and now it seems like I don't know maybe the market wants to continue going down as the AUD falling against the US dollar. It's possible. We have to check the Chinese news, the US dollar news. If the US dollar shows strength, then we will sell. If the US dollar shows weakness, then we will buy. It will mean that price might want to break. We we'll, we'll look for a good entry. A good entry around here. Let me just draw a trend line around here. We look for a good entry just at the break of at the break of let me put my feet. This is the zero, this is the hundred. Okay, this is if you see fee. This is a, an area of contention. Let me just draw my this is the serious area of the debates where thing, anything can happen. And then I'm not rushing to taking any trade on the AU. It's still it's still in until news is released and until the balance is confirmed on the daily. I'm not rushing to taking any trades here. So but this is an inside bar. I'm going to go down. Let's go down to the lower time frame. Now we've got in our area of contention and a possible area where we can take a trade from because it might rise, it might rise and read this area again before starting its beginning is uh is decent. On the other hand, it might fall from this point. This will be a good point to sell. I can make a midpoint trade. I can take a midpoint trade. If it starts to fall for me, I can take a midpoint trade down. But if the market goes up, then I'll find a good entry somewhere around here. But for now, no trade here. AUD, USD, ED. Okay, GBP, AUD. One of my favorite pairs actually, surprisingly. For I never liked it, but now I do. Market is trending here. See the faults, initial faults. No, is a higher low. Came up near the higher low. And now I'll take my feet from here. I'm just take that the last major faults. You can see market came up, tested the 50 feet. As it came up, tested the 50 feet. I'm sure it tested it again. Let me check. 
So market came from here, market went up, market went up, and market in, market came down. Okay, if I call this a test, yeah, I'll call this a test. Then this one up, this up, this down. Market came down and started showing signs of a new trend forming. And market has made a new high somewhere around here. I'll show you that new high in a second. That's why I like to go for my weekly first to to really get a very good view, bird's eye view of the charts. So this is where the market has made a new high. Is a new high. You know how to spot a high. Look at the rejection of this this area of confluence. I know that market is going to make newer lows, which will be around here likely. That's my weekly projection. Even this is an inside bar. This is an inside bar showing that market might actually go clearly down. This is the signal. If I can't take a trade from the weekly time frame. No, for a bit. <laughs> that would be a very dangerous trade, a very long term trade, a very, a very vague trade, not direct. Anything can happen in weeks, and I'm not a very long term trader, mid swing trader. Okay, clear inside by indecision candlestick just in between the two moving averages, which are on a downside, and a 200 moving average just off this um, alpha large pattern. So, um, this, this, this looks decent. This looks decent. We need more. We need more. We've seen the candlestick. We've seen the overall direction or states of the market. Now we need more. We need trend lines. We need a um, draw a trend line here. A daily trend line. Let me see if this is the best place to draw a trend line first. I have to go back and see a little. Okay, this is like a decent place to draw a trend line because. Uh, most of that trends are so far away, they are almost last year. I'm gonna draw a trend line from last year. No, just draw a trend line here. It's subject, these trend lines and everything, they are all subject to um, someone's um, discretion. Someone can say, Okay, yes, I want to draw it from here. Another person can say, No, you want to draw it from here. As long as they are aligned with your, align with your confluences and they are in the market direction and everything, you can add to your accuracy. Is not a decision maker itself, but it can add it adds to confluence. It's a confluence maker. So that's what it is. When I was still learning how to trade, I used to think, uh, okay, when you when you use a trend line, once it bounces off a trend line, that means is it does it you cut in a trade. But you have to trade like this to be able to be profitable. So let me look. Let me get the last high points there and draw another longer term trend line. Which will be very because it looks like it might fall into our might be useful to us. Okay. Establish that the market went down like this. Yeah, I establish that. Uh, so we might not need that upper trend line because my bias is that this is a sell and market is going to make a low lower than this around here. So we're just looking for opportunities to, uh, to know where to enter the market and to place the trade. The GBP AUD China China's news is very important. GBP news, Brexit news, and so many things very important. Brexit news is not so good for in UK right now. That's why that's probably why this GBP AUD wants to fall. And after this inside bar, some this might be a fake out and it might go up. I don't know. Let's find out. Let's go back. Let's go to the four hour time frame. Did we use a daily fib? Did we use a daily fib? Mm, we need a daily fib here. Let me see how can we make use of the daily fib here? The high points and just bring it up. This is the low, this is the high. This is the low, this is the high, and this is okay. Yeah, you can't really use the fib here because I know by instead we should use it the other way around. Sorry, I don't know what this is. Sorry, instead we should use it the other way around. Uh, how do I get this away now? That's the strategy. I don't want to test no strategy. Okay, yeah. Okay. So I think I should do it the other way around from this point. Uh, I know I said I'll, I'll make this video brief, but this is the only chance where I have to. This is the only chance for now. Right? I have to interact with traders on Big Phone channel. And um, uh, it's the only time I really have, honestly. Let me not talk too, too much about that analyze and explain myself so i will make the best the best of it okay let's take this as the point zero this is 100 price go here and it has rejected this if you don't think this is a rejection then there's no such thing as a rejection in the forex market this is a clear rejection from this zone 
like I came back now. Even made it a temporary high, yeah, lower high, and now it's about to smash through that level and go down to this point. But anyway, I'll just take a very long term trade from this midpoint here down to this gamma large border, and I'll forget about this trade for the next one month or so. And I'll never bother myself checking the trade. That's how that's how I love to trade. But now I've not started taking such long term trades because that would be safe for me. Two fifty. Yeah, today is about um, 100 and that'll be about that'll be more than 300 pips. That'll be one trade, 300 and something pips. That's a longer term trade. It should take at least two weeks. Depending on how the volatility is that week, it should take up to two weeks to complete. Very decent trade. I would like to trade that, in fact. And I haven't trade that this week. And just forget about the, the market for a while. Just be free in my life, do my normal job, regular job, and other things. So once price breaks this, Points and we get a retest or we get some news or something, that's when we can get an entry. Now there's no entry for now on the GBP, the PJT. This is a delicious pair. Wow, it should fall. I don't know, I don't know, but based on what I've analyzed on the GBP, on the JPY, JPY is falling, uh, GBP falling, or just about to uh, this pair will be uh, going to consolidation. That's why I didn't really analyze it in time might go into consolidation okay now let's get the overall view gbp ad okay uh market trended up up for a while up up up, up for a while and we spotted the fault this is a clear fault this is what i mean this is what is meant by fault when market is trending up and suddenly it creates a new clear distinct very clear high here and it's lower than the previous high like this the market has created a fault and the next swing immediately after that is what they call reversal trend reversal trigger wave according to the quarters theory reversal trigger wave so this is the trigger wave many traders have traded this from here from, I'm not saying, from here after this candlestick form many traders made a whole lot of money just in one week this candlestick came down here even went back up they made some more money you see why it's good to trade with very clear zones made some more money and now price as as price rejected from let me use my feet as price rejected is zero this is 100. Price rejected from there, it went back up. See, almost 61 people and produce an engulfing candlestick that smashed a quarter. The fib, the moving averages, everything, and came back down. So now, the best normally I trade my engulfing after the second the swing. So I have to go down to the lower time frame to get well to catch well, get a good swing. But let me just put where I'll use as my as my as my high and low on the lower time frame. I think this would be a low, this would be the high. No, 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 this is high. This is a low. Okay, when I get there, I'll find out. I get to lower time frame. But you can see this market looks like it's swinging up, down, up, down, up here. Yeah. And now it's going. This is a new, this is a trend. This, is, of course, this is a new trend. And so, market might just be headed towards this quarter on a on, on the on the south time frame. So, when we're eventually ready to sell GBP for the JPY, when we have good information that GBP is falling drastically or the JPY is rising and then uh, some other things come in complaint you can sell it to this point if you get any news that the jpy is rising gpb is rising drastically and jpy is falling then we can do but for now we know that the jpy is a little bit strong interest rates have not really been changed i just got that news this morning it's not it's not so strong but it's a little bit strong interest rate has not been changed and then uh, might not lead to any major serious push in this pair towards the um towards the up towards the yeah towards the upside more likely to the downside those on the fundamental mind state sentiments okay here you can see this is this is there's not let some some traders might say uh, this is a fault but I won't call this a fault I'll say this is a test because this is the high we're looking at this is the first high this is the second high and this is the third high we're looking at we're not looking at it on this level some might see this and say oh market has type market might go up Honestly, market might actually go up on a longer. That's why we have long, we have um, time frames of trading. So that if you're a longer term trader, you are trading from here, and you are selling as the market bounces up this zone. You are selling probably to this point because you're a longer term trader trading for one month, two months. You don't want to look at the charts again. You just want to go back, a pilot. You want to go back to your normal job. So as you've seen, that price has bounced over this area. You might sell to this point. But some other shorter term traders might decide, okay, now my own. And trading, I'm looking for 200 pips, 100 pips, 150 pips to make my day. And then um, you can look at this time frame, and that's a trader like me. 
I look at such a time frame to see if the GBP is good to buy that period, if GBP is good to sell that period or not. So on the daily time frame, markets has market is making a temporary high low this is situation, but it's very likely that my, um, very likely that it might retest the fifty percent fib of this particular particular swing this is a swing each of these is a swing this is not a market cycle market cycles are seen on the daily time frame, on the weekly time frame but this is a swing all this now is a is a whole trend this whole thing i don't show this whole thing we're looking at from here is one cycle this whole thing from that's from this top to this down is a cycle because market has entered a new stage where it has left the former trend and has left the former trend and is now forming a new situation we don't know whether it's going to be a range because market could easily start ranging here between here and here and here and we don't know how it's going can start ranging might not trend directly from even this loop it looks like it's going to range in fact from this so we just know that we, our business is catching the swings catching the swings those delicious swings that we can use to make some money and uh used to make some money and feed off this um currency market let's just take that point zero i think that price created a high here on the daily time frame remember our overall weekly uh, bias is that it might go lower it might go lower but we don't want to rush into that we're just thinking okay price might from our analysis though since this is a top here price might just just hit this this 50 feet or the uh, 32 feet but you know, see here this is that going to be a midpoint trade and it's not going to hit the next large quarter which is never up to our 125p target this is a very risky trade and then uh, i'll deem it not completely not absolutely necessary so uh, i'll still wait for some more confirmation this is an engulfing candlestick no doubt so wait for more information before i can just go around selling this go on selling this because my bar bias is down and this this looks like it's going to go up just a little before it creates a new high around here coming back down well, I'm still very skeptical of buying out of this point because the 50 fib is around here. 50 fib is around here. I'm not expecting so much rise in the USD over the next one week or so. I'm not really expecting so much of a rise. Although the JPY might fall. But I'm not expecting so much of a rise from the USD. But let's just see how it goes. So, price has also gotten here. See this point? It might just hit this point and start going back down. That's why it's risky to buy and it's not yet a sell. So, uh, I think that's what I've gone through all the pairs. I've gone through all the pairs. And then that's what I think will happen in the forex market this coming week. Well, I, I'm not I'm not the gen not some genius that analyzes the market perfectly, but I just try and bring in different complexes and different analysis and different things to see if it will make sense. Well, good luck in your trading and I uh, hope everything goes well. Bye.